卡，卡拉，卡哈，卡拉，卡哈，卡拉是。It's so hard. I can't say the k or the ein. <laughs> I am originally from Colorado in the U.S., and I went to university in New York. I had the chance to study abroad for a semester, and I ended up choosing Morocco because I already spoke French and wanted to learn Arabic.、Um, I was really excited to come to Morocco. I didn't actually want to go to Morocco because I was studying the Middle East and I didn't consider Morocco as part of the Middle East. Take Morgan. And then Zouina. Yeah. Zouina. I did fill out a, a survey. It was like, do you want. A family with small children. I said no because I don't like small children. You don't choose which family you get, and I love kids. I love pets. I eat anything, so they just put me with a family. I don't really know how they made the decision. So I had a host dad, a host mom, and then a two-year-old sister named Muna. <laughs> My host parents were really cute. I have no complaints about them. I was expecting them to speak English because I got a piece of paper that says that they speak English. Which was fine because I had studied Arabic for my first two years of college. I could read it and I knew some vocab, but speaking wasn't good. I'm a really bad cook. No matter what gastronomy it is, I'm not good at it. I don't want to. I don't want to poison anyone. <laughs> 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 
my mom was relieved because she she likes that saying that Morocco is a good house in a bad neighborhood, so she was all for it. But back at my college, I had a study abroad advisor who basically told us Morocco is very conservative. You can't show your collarbones like you have to be covered from here up or else you're going to get like publicly groped and you can't walk with anyone of the opposite sex in the street even if you're just friends because people will think you're a prostitute. Um, all this, this stuff that maybe applies to other places but when I got to Morocco I immediately realized that that was all. She wasn't, she didn't actually know what she was talking about. She was just. Before coming to Morocco, my entire knowledge of Morocco was from academic projects, so I knew some about Moroccan literature or Moroccan history or Moroccan food, but nothing about day-to-day -day life in Morocco or family life in Morocco. My family was completely supportive of my choice and they were really excited for me. They've always instilled in me a love of travel and learning about other cultures ever since I was little. So they were really excited for me to be able to go abroad. And ever since I was little, when we could, we would go on trips. And it was kind of just something I knew I always wanted to do. And I always traveled when I had a chance. So they were really excited for me. Not a lot of Americans get to study abroad. And those who do choose big cities in Europe, I think I was definitely one of the few, but there were a few other girls from my university who also chose to come to Morocco, but we were in different programs. For the program I did in Morocco, you had to do an application talking about why you want to come to Morocco, what you think you'll gain from the experience. Once we got to Morocco, they did a language test so that you could speak a little French or Arabic, but if you didn't speak any, you would just start in a beginner course, so it wasn't, it wasn't like you couldn't come if you didn't speak any language, you just started language classes. It was weird to me that we're all eating out of the same plate, the same tagine. And also when we had couscous for the first time, they gave me that milk stuff. I wanted to say, oh, dairy is bad for my skin. I had to like push it away from me and say, la shukran. The first time I saw my host family eating couscous with their hands, just the first time, I was like, oh, I don't know about that one. I'm not gonna do that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
حياه حياه معانا ولكن هي دخلات سبحان الله دخلات بحال اللي عارفه انا من سنين بحال اللي عارفه انا من سنين هي <تصفيق> كمورغان اول مره جيتي لهنا للدار من الدار ياك عقلتي دخلتي عادي مزيان دار عنا <تصفيق> وكذلك تفاجات امها تمها جات عندنا لهنايا اول مره حتى هي عاجبه الحال ما عادي بحال اللي حنا كنعرفوها من سنين تمها كتدخل عندي سبحان الله عادي كتدخل واخا تكون الدنيا ما مجموعاش يعني الا جات عندك العربيه و... وصنات عليك لتحت كتجري تجمع الدار وهذا باش ما تشوفلكش الدنيا مقلوبه ون... هي لا تجي كيما كانت الدار كيما كانت هذا ما كتواخش ما كتنابهش ما كت عاديه عاديه بزاف بزاف زعما جابها لي الله كنشكر سيدي ربي الحمد <تصفيق> <تصفيق> لله واش تزيدي تزيدي اه نزيدك جا زوين 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 وهاد التالي نزيدك الا جا زوين صافي هي حتى لما فيا ما نهضر وما نهضرش ما تواخدنيش ما تواخدنيش واخا نكون عيانه ولا من هذا وكتحس بيا الا كانت طايره لي كتحس بيا سبحان الله كتقول لي مالك واخا كنحاول زعما ما نبينلهاش ولكن سبحان الله كت كتحس بيا طايره لي ولا خاصني شي حاجه ولا انا ما كنشكر سيدي ربي اللي عطى لي هذه البنيته هاني ايوا الحمد لله حنا الحمد لله كلنا حتى هي دابا ديالنا ولات ديالنا الحمد لله <laughs> the language barrier is tricky because I speak English and French and very little Arabic, even though I'm learning. Um, but my host dad speaks some French, my host family in general speaks some French. Um, so it's a mix of my little Arabic, French, charades, a combination. But in general, I think you can communicate everything that's necessary. بصراحة بيري كانوا فيها كانوا فيها حسن التعامل مع الأشياء اللي لقات في الدار يعني العادات والتقاليد وكذا كانت انضبطت معهم يعني ما كانش شيء إنسان اللي هي حاولت مثلا تعامل بشي حوايج اللي هي كديرهم تعود عليهم يعني بالعكس خلات راسها وحدة من العائلة <تصفيق> عاودي 
كاين احترام الاديان يعني ملي كنوضو نصليو اولا بحال هكا يعني بالعكس كتسمع الاذان هي كتسكت باش نتصنتو ليه When I was in Morocco for Ramadan, it was in 2017. I was in Rabat and I was living alone actually. It was just after my program, but I was still going to the organization every day. So I fasted like everyone else. And even though I wasn't with a family at that point, so many Moroccan families invited me to break the fast with them, um, which was really nice and it was really cool to be a part of that. People in my neighborhood never really got used to seeing me for some reason because every time I walked to school I would see the same people giving me weird looks because I was in the middle of this, this market. I got harassed a lot so I didn't like being by myself. So I always did whatever my friends were doing. I never went anywhere. Sometimes people in the Medina would be rude to us and say, like, we don't need you here, get out. One of my favorite parts is playing with the two-year-old, Muna. She just has so much energy and it doesn't matter if we don't speak the same language because she's two. She speaks better Arabic, English, and French than I do, honestly. <laughs> um, so I can teach her some English words and she can teach me some Arabic words. Um, she has so much energy that there's always something to do with her, whether it's running around the house, singing songs. I brought um, little stickers with food. So she, I say the food word in English and she says it in Arabic sometimes. Oh, he's so cute. So I just sent him some hearts. I didn't think he was going to respond. I just wanted him to know that I thought he was cute. I didn't answer when he responded because I knew that if, if we met, he's going to be disappointed. Maybe I don't look that good in person. So I, I didn't want to answer him. Thank you. 
Really amazing how much you can get in one place and all out in the open air. The difference between Moroccan souks and stores in the U.S., I guess, the main difference would be in the U.S. everything has a fixed price, where in Morocco you have to ask and sometimes haggle. <laughs> Yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges is when I'm at the souk alone and I ask for the, a price, it's way higher than the price they would give a Moroccan, even if I haggle it down and even if I speak in Arabic. My host sister, they help and they tell me like, no, this is a reasonable price, don't accept anything higher than this. Well, I'm, getting, I'm getting better at, at haggling and shopping in Morocco in general. C'est bon. Morgan, je vois Zouina. Zouina. Kika. Donc, Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sweaty. Meal times were really weird to me. 
When I first got home from my classes, they had tea time. And I was like, this is cool. I like cake and bread. And then I just stuffed my face. I was, I ate so much because I thought that was my dinner. And then at 11 p.m. I was like ready for bed. And then they were like, Morgan, it's time for dinner. And I was like, what? I'm ready for bed. It was, and then I had to get used to staying up late to eat dinner and then waking up early to eat breakfast. But now I, I really like tea time, so I don't complain about it anymore. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> 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 Yeah. 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 I mean, found me on Instagram because I had my Instagram linked to my dating app profile. So then he sent me a message on Instagram and I was like, oh, okay, he's actually interested. The moment I realized that I actually liked him, he wasn't just someone I was talking to, was when he sent me a video of himself coming out of his apartment and all the cats in his neighborhood came running up to him because he feeds them. So when I saw that video, I thought, like, this, this guy's really, really cute and he loves cats and he used to model, so maybe I should go on a date with him. Ça, 
c'est rupia. 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 Oui. There are so many words in Darija and Moroccan Arabic that are impossible to say. There's no vowels. There's so many letters that don't exist in English. beautiful here, so we did a lot of hiking, walking around. Kind of a nice change of pace because we're always doing an activity, but it was kind of nice just to be out, out in the outdoors where people could talk and there's not other distractions or anything. He wanted to get married as soon as I moved here. I don't, that sounds like he's using me for, for immigration. It's, it's, that's what my grandma thinks. Islam. 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 Allah. Allah. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Can you repeat it? <laughs> <laughs>
to most people that seems like way too fast and too soon and you're rushing it, but when we met each other it was like we'd known each other forever. That's how I knew he was my soulmate because I'm not the type of person to rush into big life decisions like that. But as soon as I met him, I, I had this, this feeling that I had known him for my whole life. He, he was planning on renting a venue and having musicians and a bunch of dresses and stuff. I didn't even go to my college graduation because I don't like being around lots of people. But we ended up having a small party, and I mean small in Moroccan terms. I didn't realize how big families are, but this one I didn't have to talk to anyone. I just sat there and like smiled and held my hands up for, for pictures with the henna. Do you remember the 
the first time we met? Yeah. Now well, can you tell me about it? <laughs> well, you were in your brown jacket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I told you I liked your jacket. And I told you to walk on my left side because my right side is my bad side. Yeah, that was and weird. And you thought it was weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we went to we went to the beach. And yeah. I asked you if you believed in aliens. And you were like, yeah, yeah. And then I kept asking you questions about it, and you didn't know what I was talking about. No, I knew what you were talking about. It's just weird to talk about aliens in our first date. No, it's date. not. <laughs> it's interesting. Well, not, it wasn't for me that much. I was interested in you. Like, I wanted to know more about you, but you were talking about aliens. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. I didn't know. Can you make me some ice too? Okay. Do Before I moved here, I had this vision that we were gonna live in Morocco for at least five years. I was gonna get really good at Arabic. I was gonna do research. I was gonna do all this stuff. But living here as a responsible adult is a lot different than living here as a student who has a host family taking care of me. We made a decision that we were going to to get the visa. وكطول ما بين عام حتى العام وثلاث شهور يعني هذيك هي المده اللي نقدروا نبدلوها اون فوا غادي تخرج غادي غادي نتحركوا لامريكا You learn so much not being in your home country where you grew up and living abroad and experiencing a new culture, a new language, new way of life, um, new perspective on things. And I guess I wanted to stay in Morocco long term because I started learning Arabic. I have only started learning about Morocco in some sense. So um, it's really great for me to live here and then help students have the same experience I did when I first got to come to Morocco. Being in Morocco definitely made me grow up. Um, I feel like I wasn't really awake until I went to Morocco, so I, Morocco really woke me up, and it definitely changed my life in a good way. <laughs> 